Welcome to today's video on Digitriot's IAIS app for Apple mobile devices. We first released IAIS back in 2011 as a simple free app for anyone that purchased our IAIS, the world's first wireless AIS receiver. It's proved a popular app with thousands of downloads each year and works with all of our wireless NMEA products including our uh, AIT 3000 Class B transponder, uh, the latest Nomad Portable Class B transponder that we released this summer, and of course all of our wireless to NMA converters such as the Navlink for NMA 2000 or our WLN 10 HS and WLN 20 converters for NMA 183. Uh, to download IS, we simply need to go to the App Store and then we need to search and then we need to search on IAIS as I've typed in there. and uh, then you'll see the the app um, with the digital your IS icon and you can download that. Now I've already done that so uh, I won't be downloading it again I just need to go back there and you'll see once you've downloaded it appears as an icon on your desktop. So the first thing we need to do to actually start receiving data and using the IS app is to actually wirelessly connect to whatever wireless AIS of ours that you're using. So we go into settings and as you can see there we can see the DY Nomad which is the unit I'm using for this video and we just select that and after a couple of seconds we should get a little tick appear alongside it to show that it's connected and you'll also get this no internet connection warning. Now don't worry about that because that's uh, ex to be expected because Nomad is a is a wireless device that provides data it's not a wireless router with a internet connection so so don't worry about that. Um, the main thing is that we got the tick and we got a good wireless connection. And once connected, what we can do then is run the IAIS app. Um, and you can see that we're running version 3.0, uh, which is the release that we released this last week. Um, and it's got the new Navionics chart support feature, uh, which I'm going to tell you a bit more about later in this video. But let's click the, the blue plotter button. Now when you first run IS you'll see a plain blue background and the first thing we want to do is to turn on the data link so we've got some data to, to put up on the screen. So what we do is we click the instruments button and then we'll get a warning there saying that uh, location service is not enabled. Don't worry we'll be using the we won't need the location services which is the built-in GPS of the I phone or iPad will be using the GPS from the AIS transponder so don't worry about that. What we'll do is go to press the cogwheel icon in the top right hand corner and then the TCPIP icon in the top left hand corner and that takes us to the data link setup screen. Now the defaults for this are port 2000 which is the same port that we use on all of our wireless uh, AIS products so they don't need to change that and we've also defaulted to UDP which is probably the best mode in most situations um, because it allows multiple iPhones and iPads to receive the same data at the same time so really there's nothing on this screen to change and I've just click the link button at the top and as soon as we do that we'll see green text start to scroll in the black window at the bottom and this is the data that's being received from the wireless AIS and typically if it's a transponder as it is in this case you'll see two different types of data some starting with a dollar sign GP which is the GPS data and some starting with an exclamation mark AI which is the AIS data but the key thing here is is not you know what the actual data is there but the fact that you're seeing the scrolling data indicates that there's a good data connection so we can click the save button in the top right hand corner we do that twice and then that takes us back to the instrument page where we've got the GPS data there that it's receiving and also we've got an AIS count here um, it's showing us we've got 15 vessels now that'll probably increase a little bit because we're I'm just doing this uh, video uh, in my home office in Portsmouth so we're overlooking Portsmouth Harbour and there's quite a few vessels out there tonight so yeah we're up to 18 now so let's start looking at those vessels by going to the plotter screen click the plotter button and then <coughs> so now this is the main IS uh, page that you'll use most of the time. Um, what you see is the blue circle in the middle. Um, that will actually change to a triangle that points up, up the screen um, when we start to move. But um, I'm stationed at the moment, so it's a, it's a circle. And that is us, basically. That's the boat's position. It's always 
in the centre of the range rings. Um, the range rings are a bit like a you know, radar type display. Um, it gives you uh, the, the distances um, very clearly on the screen. And around your boat you'll see the AIS targets that are being received and they're the orange and purple uh, boat shapes. So the orange uh, icons are the Class A vessels and the purple are the Class B and you'll notice that each symbol has a, a circle in the middle of it uh, which is either yellow um, if all of the boat's static data such as the boat name hasn't been received yet um, or green if all the AIS data has been received for the boat. Um, basically with in the AIS system the data that's changing all the time, the, the, the uh, position, course, speed, things like that, that's transmitted quite regularly um, up to, uh, depending upon the type of vessel and, and the speed that it's doing, it can be anything up to every three seconds, although for a class B transponder it's every 30 seconds once you're doing more than a couple of knots of uh, speed over ground. So, um, but then every six minutes a vessel transmits its static data so this is the data that doesn't change very much like the boat name the dimensions of the boat the type of boat things like that so you know straight away you should see all the vessels with a yellow dot in but then after over a six minute period they'll gradually all start to turn green as all the data is received um, so that's a little bit background about AIS um, Let's also look a bit more detail at how the vessels are shown. I'm just going to pan over a bit here. Um, so moving vessels are shown with a, uh, a course line um, sticking out and the longer the line the faster the vessel's moving uh, and the vessels that are stationary at anchor or moored um, don't have a, a course line displayed. Um, I mean the IS display we designed it to be very much like a, a radar so uh, all the vessels are shown in course up mode which makes it much easier to to match what you're seeing on the display to what you're seeing in real life at the helm um, and the range rings you know give you a good good way of judging distances uh, and as you zoom in and out that's with the plus and minus buttons you'll see that the range rings that's the, the uh, distance labels change so that's as we're zooming in and as we zoom out, so one, two, three nautical miles, and then 1.5, three, 4.5. And you can pan around, um, just like that. And then, um, so that, that allows you to sort of focus on a particular AIS target. And then if you at any time want to center back on the boat, you just hit the plotter button again, and it centers. Now to find out data about an AIS target, you literally just click on the AIS target and up comes the MMSI number, the position, uh, course, all, all the sort of in information that you're, you're interested in. Um, if we click on uh, one with a green uh, uh, circle in, it will come up with all the information. Uh, so this one's St. Clair, which is uh, I think one of the Brittany ferries. Um, and then you've got all the data there, passenger ship, it's on its way from, uh, I don't know what that destination is PME to FBU but um, it's a class A vessel and you've got yeah, all the all the data you could need about it there. Also if you want to look at the, a list of AAS targets you click the targets button and then if there's a particular vessel that you're interested in you can scroll down and, and find it in the list. But it's it's generally the plotter screen is the one that you know, you'll be using most of the time. I mean the Free IS app is, is, is a simple but effective way to display the AIS data on an iOS device, and we wanted to give customers a, a free app that could immediately they could immediately start using with with our products. I mean, there's definitely you know more sophisticated apps out there um, available from third parties such as iNavX, iSailor from Transas, Time Zero from Maxi, or even our own Navlink app. But for many users, IS is, is more than adequate, and, and now with the new Navionix chart support, um, is a you know a, you can uh, have that as an in-app purchase uh, for I think it's about ten pounds, and then you can get the Navionix charts in the background. And I'm going to do a, um, a a separate video about that aspect of that and show how the the 
in-app purchase of the Navionics charts can really bring this IS app to life. Um, but I hope you enjoyed today's um, video and do look out for the next video that I'll be doing on the, on the Navionics chart add-on. So thanks very much for watching.